Hey everybody, it's Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Uh, today is Friday, the 21st of April, 2021. Hope you had a good week in, in the market. Uh, you know, Bitcoin has been leading the market pretty much up and down this year so far. And we had uh, what people call risk off, uh, just means selling really, uh, in bio, uh, I'm sorry, in the Bitcoin, it was down a little bit more than 10%. And the rest of the broader market uh, pretty much followed it with the exception of the biotechs, which we know have been the wor- you know one of the worst groups this year they're close to going positive on the year uh, but it's been you know all over the place so let's take a look at the action on the uh, charts and make some sense of it the s p 500 is still holding on to the bulk of its gains in here and the anchored volume weighted average price from this gap has been important recently uh, this blue line is the anchored vwap for the week and you can see we're stuck below that came up to it today and uh, if we remain underneath this five-day moving average right there behind the orange, uh, then I think that it's, it's likely that we'll see um, some further backing and filling. If we come down to this and test it again, it's likely we would do something like this and then drop down maybe over on the daily time frame to that 20-day moving average and the anchored VWAP from the all-time high right here. That would bring us down to about 408 or so. That wouldn't be a terrible thing. That's only four points, 1% lower from here. But it seems as though we're maybe going to undergo a little bit of profit taking. It all depends on what happens with the individual stocks because we're in the thick of earnings season right now. And as we saw, for instance, with Tesla, you know, they got hit pretty hard for the first time really all year. They're below their anchored volume weighted average price. What that simply means is that the average participant on the long side this year is now down. The average price uh, that uh, uh, Tesla has traded at is about 174. So the average long is down nine points. The average short seller is uh, now in a winning position. So the sellers have control. We're below a declining 20 and 50 day moving average. We're below a declining 200 day moving average. So it seems like uh, Tesla, I, I know everyone loves to trade it for whatever reason. It's just another stock. I'd stay away from this one for a little while. Let's go back to the index and look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is still stuck below this le- level right here. Uh, Some people will call this a double top. That's, you know, if you want to call that a double top, it's only confirmed once it breaks below here. Look it up on, uh, you know, any technical site. Uh, A true double top means that it finds resistance in the same area, but it has to break below this level. And once a double top has formed, what we then do is we say the height of that pattern, so 312 to 311, that's nine points, is the height of this pattern. Uh, What we expect when it breaks below that is is for a nine point decline. So it would go, you know, essentially from uh, 313 down to 304 would be the price objective of the measured move. Now, it doesn't mean I would expect it to drop straight down to that level. Um, and I'm really not a big fan of price targets. I think you have to look at first, you know, the anchored volume weighted average price from the COVID low, the anchored volume weighted average price from the all time high we're still struggling with, and, and see that maybe it would come into here. And, you know, we've got that 50 day moving average coming up into this area as well. So, you know, 310 ish. But, you know, here's where we are. This is the key level of support for this market right now. If we drop down towards 313 and below it, I definitely wouldn't be a short seller on a break below. I would look for it to do this and then short it as it breaks down from there. And in fact, next week, with it below the declining five day moving average and the anchored volume weighted average price from this gap, uh, it seems as though this might be some distribution. So I would suggest until we get back above 317 and a half, 318, that you are you know pretty cautious in regards to the NASDAQ. We've had a huge rally this year in the NASDAQ and you know it can't sustain this type of pace without some backing and filling. I mean, we had this huge rally at the beginning of the year and a pretty good pullback. Another pullback wouldn't be a surprise and shouldn't shock anyone. So, you know, if you're a trader, have your stops in place. The uh, Russell 2000, I've been calling it a waste of time, and I continue to believe it's a waste of time. If it can get even back above this little band of resistance, it looks like clear sailing based on this 30-minute time frame on the right. But when you look at the daily time frame on the left, what you see is the anchored volume weighted average price from the high this year, which has been resistance on several occasions, is 
is right here, that purple line. Well, that's also where we see the blue year-to-date anchored volume weighted average price. The the thin blue line is the declining 50-day moving average, and this black line is the 200-day moving average. So even if it can get beyond this little band of resistance, it might get a quick little pop up, but I think it's highly likely that you would see some supply released in this area, and it really wouldn't have much room to run. So I continue to believe it's a waste of time. Maybe the market proves me wrong. It wouldn't be the first time, and uh, it wouldn't bother me if it proved me wrong either, um, because that's just part of the nature of trading. And uh, you know, you you take the risks that you feel are appropriate for the uh, for what you perceive the potential reward. And when the potential reward, I think, is right up in here at one eighty one ish, you know, there's just not a lot of uh, opportunity to justify taking that risk uh, for me. Maybe you see it differently and that's the way you should trade because no one, you shouldn't listen to anyone except for the market and your time frame. The semiconductors still seem vulnerable to me. They close right on that 50-day moving average. That's the thin blue line. And I can, you know, clear this up a little bit. It might make it easier for some people to see. The red is a 20-day moving average. That blue is the 50. The thick blue is, you know, which has been holding as support on the previous two tests is the year-to-date anchor volume weighted average price. We broke below this support here just recently uh, this week, on you know, today actually, and if it can't get back above and hold above 250, I think it's highly likely that we test this year-to-date anchored VWAP. And, you know, just similar to Tesla, just look at Tesla, it doesn't mean it will hold again. Now, I don't expect that the semiconductor index would just gap down through that level, but it tells me that, you know, with a declining 20-day moving average, the 50-day moving average, kind of flattened out. We've had a huge run in the semiconductors this year. That some further pullback would not come as a surprise at all. And to me, I think it would be welcome to see that happen just to digest these gains. You can't expect markets to just continue to move straight higher. Now, the biotechs, again, they had a big week and they came right up to the where, where they were supposed to. Uh, the interesting thing is that they were able to get back up into that level once again today. So again, a strong week. We're riding a rising five-day moving average. So clearly you don't want to go short in here, but we're at, you know, we, we, we kind of pinballed between the anchored volume weighted average price from the high this year. That's that thick red line and the anchored volume weighted average price from the beginning of the year. That anchored VWAP from the beginning of the year is also where we see this black 200-day moving average. So Really, I mean, it was kind of choppy. It was actually very choppy in the uh, trading. It's not as you know good as the headline might have looked. I mean, how much could you have really traded this? Is the way I look at it. And you know, if you wanted to chase that gap, it would have worked this time. But then, you know, for the rest of the week beyond Monday, it was just a chop fest. It gapped up and closed lower. Rallied up the next day. Gapped down. Then today we saw a rally back up. So, you know, it always reminds me of the uh, uh, um, quote by George Soros, which is volatility peaks uh, at, at turning points and diminishes with the trends. Maybe this is in, uh, a, a distribution up in here at this level. Um, to me, I just don't see an edge, so I really don't have much interest in the biotech index. Doesn't mean there might not be some individual opportunities in the uh, stocks that comprise of biotechs, but again, we're in earnings season, so it's a, on, in all of these cases, it's every stock based on its own merits. That's the way I always view it. Uh, the financial stocks are still, you know, hammering away uh, at this level up in here. This is where we have the declining 50-day moving average, the 200-day moving average, and the thick blue line is the year-to-date anchored VWAP. So it seems like on the right-hand side here on this 30-minute time frame, we're starting to maybe undergo a little bit of distribution. We've got the anchored VWAP from this gap right here. We're pretty much breaky. You know, the average participant is pretty much break even from there. I would be on the alert that maybe it does something like this and if it breaks below there maybe you know we go down and you know like most people like to see gaps closed. Uh, so maybe that gap gets closed. I mean, this gap didn't get closed. 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 So when people always talk about, you know, the gap has to get filled and, uh, you know, all that sort of thing, do they really have to get filled? I mean, that's really not the way it always works. So just be aware of that if you trade on the expectation of gaps always getting filled. Sometimes they don't get filled for, you know, months later. Later, years later, um, 
So just keep that in mind as far as a trading strategy. It's really not the best trading strategy there is. The uh, energy names did pull back a little bit in here as well. Um, so they are still, though, holding impressively right now. So this is kind of you know opposite of what we've seen in the other markets. We're holding right on the year-to-date anchored VWAP. That's that thick blue line. This thinner blue line is the 50-day moving average. The thin red line is the 20-day moving average. And the black line right here is the 200-day moving average. So we have all this level in here. So this is clearly an important level and the anchored VWAP from this low. So, you know, maybe we see a quick break below there and then rally back up and then perhaps it can continue higher or it breaks below here and continues lower. Nobody has a crystal ball. I'm not going to pretend I know the future, but it seems as though we're at an important level here. So if you're interested in trading the energy names, pay attention in here. Let's talk about Bitcoin for a moment because Bitcoin, you know, nearly doubled on the year so far. And it seems as though we're highly likely to pull back into this level right here, about 26, let's just call it 26,750. That's the anchored volume weighted average price from that March low. Now that's important because the low from last year, we saw that anchor and then it touched it and bounced from there. So this is what I, you know, I call an anchored volume weighted average handoff, which I wrote about in my book. So this is where it seems likely that some uh, buyers will show up and perhaps you get a bounce. Then we're going to want to keep an eye, as we have been, on the anchored volume weighted average price from the all-time high, which is that black line. So we're, you know, we we ran up through there, and it's not always a per precise level of support or resistance, but it is definitely a level of interest, and that's what you know the anchored volume weighted average price is all about. It's not about picking the exact turn point or expecting a level. To to hold. It's about seeing a level of interest that potentially becomes uh, a turning point. So if you're viewing this on YouTube, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, all the stuff everyone always says, and have a good weekend.